Hey, in this video, we are going to create a design for a mobile dashboard in Power BI. It's going to be a small one page email report showing the email volume over time. We can select the view between year, month and week. We can filter our data. Below our line chart, we have some KPIs. And below that, we have a distribution over time between the emails we have sent and the emails we have received. I took the inspiration for the design from Dribble. I also put a link in the description. It's a nice sleep data dashboard. I really like the colors and the gradients. And we are going to use Figma to try to rebuild it. First, we are going to create a frame, pressing F. Here we have the option to select this iPhone 14, 15 Pro. And this is going to be a background, so we can call it background. Then we will add this blue part to it, create another frame and align it in the corner and also to the width and it can be 450 or 30 high. And then we will add the fill color to it. It's going to be a gradient color and to the top part we can color pick a lighter blue. And to the bottom part, we are going to pick a darker blue. I'm gonna move it to the side a little bit. And we won't add stars and stuff like that, but we will add some disruption by creating a spotlight. So I'm pressing O to add an ellipse. The fill is going to be white, let's say 20% transparent and adding a layer blur effect with 150 pixel. I rotate it a little bit, something like this. And then I copy this entire frame one. That's the blue frame. And drag the copy to the bottom. Make sure that it covers the entire background. For the fill, we are going to color pick from this bottom area, a lighter purple, and then in the bottom, this darker color. And then we can add this glowing effect to it. So let's go to effects and add the drop shadow. The Y axis is going to be minus 50. Minus is going to the upward direction. And the blur is going to be 150. With the color of this purple or pink. And if you zoom in, you see that there is also a light stroke. We can also add it. It's going to be white, 20%, 0.5 pixel wide, and only on the top. After that, we are going to create this header part here. I'm gonna make a new frame and just align it in the top, also to the width, and it's gonna be 128 tall. And the fill effect, going to be black with 30% transparency. Let's add the stroke to it too. It's going to be white. Again, 20% transparent, 0 0.5 pixels, and only on the bottom this time. We can also add the drop shadow. This is okay. 10% blur. Black is okay too. And we can add 10% to it. These are minor differences, but all together they add up. So this is going to be our first export. Uh, we can select the entire background and go to export here. We have the option to export it as an SVG, which has a better resolution, but some elements get lost sometimes. For example, in this case, this glowing effect wouldn't be visible. So for now, export it as PNG. Export background, save it somewhere, and let's head to Power BI. We want to make the dashboard for mobiles, so we could use this mobile layout view. The issue with this is that it's pretty limited, so we cannot even put a background, for example. Instead of that, let's stick with the desktop layout and let's change the canvas size to our background size. Go to canvas settings type custom and the height is going to be 852 with a width 393. Then go to canvas background 
and we can import our image image fit to fit and we can start with our visualizations if you look back in figma we have this line chart with these gradients we can do the same so let's create a line chart and we will add from the measures the email account it's going to show the email account over time and we will add from the dim date table the month short column to the x-axis can make it a bit larger and then let's go to formatting general remove the title effects remove the background go to visuals on the x-axis we change the font to segway ui light nine pixel is okay for the color we are going to pick a light variation of this background color so it has the same blue shade in it I already picked some colors, so you can just have this same light color. Add it to it, remove the title, and we do the same to the y-axis. Values, Segway UI light. Color is light blue. Remove the title. After that, we can remove the grid lines. And then let's go to the lines and change the stroke fit to 2. The line type, we can change it to smooth, so it has these curved lines. I prefer the linear because it's more accurate, but in this design, we are going to use this one. And then for the color, we can select the light blue again. Then we can create some KPIs, some cards, with the total volume and also some other measures. So let's create a card. We will add our email account to it, go to formatting, general, effects, remove background, add the title, and it's going to be total volume. The font is going to be Segway UI Lite again. The size is going to be 12 pixels, and the text color this time is going to be this light purple or light pink. Just copy it and center align it then go to the visual formattings disable category label then the call out value is going to be subway ui light 2 24 pixels and add this light purple to it too we can align it make it a bit smaller and then we can show for example the total volume last year and also how did it change compared to last year so let's copy the card we can replace the fields with email account last year and let's make it a bit smaller call out value going to be 16 pixel and then general title is going to be 10 pixel also change the title to last year And we can copy this and this is going to be our change and on the data field we are going to add email account versus last year percentage we can align our total volume to the same width also size them properly so they don't overlap then you can select all three of them and copy them one time on the other side here we are going to replace the email account with response rate this is not an accurate measure it's just the division between the sent and the received emails it's not really a response rate but we are going to use it for this design anyway let's go to the visual general and let's change the title to response rate then in the last year card we are going to use the response rate last year and in the change response rate versus last year percentage okay after this we can create another visual showing the distribution of the sent and the received emails over time for that we are going to create a copy of the line chart drag it to the bottom and it's going to be a stacked column chart here we replace the email account with the email account received and the email account sent. 
then go to the formatting, we can remove the legend, then in the y-axis and x-axis, then in the axis we can change the color, and now we will have a light color but with the shade of this purple background. Yeah, the same color what we had here in the cards. And here we can change the color, this light blue, to our light purple color. The same for the y-axis. And then we can scroll down to the columns and also change the colors for the stacks. It's going to be a darker shade of this light purple and light blue. The emails received are going to be this medium blue color. You can copy the hex code. And then for the email account sent, we are going to use this other code. We can make it a bit smaller. And I also want to add two cards here showing the total numbers of sent and total number of received emails. But I also want to make them at the same time work as a button. So whenever we select the sent, it's going to filter all the visuals to the sent emails and the same for the received. We cannot do this with cards, but we can use this new slicer for that. And we can add in the fact email data, this folder column, which has the received and the sent information. Go to visual settings, formattings, general, remove the title, effects, remove the background, go back to visual. In the shape, we can add a rounded rectangle. The rounding is going to be 14 pixels. Then the layout is going to be one row, two columns with 16 pixel spacing. Then go down to the callout values. The font is going to be Segway UI Lite. 12 pixel is okay. And we are going to pick the same light purple color or pink color, center aligned. And then we are going to add some labels, which are going to be our numbers. Turn on labels and we will add this email count as data. The font is going to be Segway UI Lite, 24 pixels. And the color of the numbers should indicate which part of this tag column chart do they represent. So it should have a conditional formatting. The scent is going to be this purple and the received is going to be this blue. I already created a measure for that, which is this folder selection label color. If this folder column is sent, we will have this purple. If it's received, we have the blue. Let's add it as a conditional formatting, field value, folder, folder selection label color. Now we can also remove this padding between the value and the label. And then we can scroll down to the buttons, make sure that the state is selected. Here we will remove the border and for the fill we will add 100% transparency. We can also go back to the padding and change it to custom and we will remove the top and bottom padding which gives us more flexibility with the space. We can align it, resize it a little bit, something like this. And then we can add some effects to the different states Scroll up to the callout values. Let's change the state in the buttons. We can skip the hover state because on mobile, we cannot really hover with our finger. We can just tap, we can just press elements. So let's select the press. And here the filling is going to be white too, but 50% transparent. Looking like this. Then let's select the selected state. Here, feel white again, but 70% transparency. Then scroll up and we change also in the callout values. We can keep the press as it is, but let's go to selected. And here, let's change it to Segway UI. Color is white, that's okay. And for the label, we can change it also to normal Segway UI. 
And here we should keep the colors. So let's add the field formatting again. Measure folder. So it looks like whichever we select, we have a little effect on the press and then the selected element is highlighted. We can add also a slicer to it with the date, so we can select different periods. Let's add the normal slicer and I'm going to put this year field into it. Let's go to formattings, slicer settings, style is going to be drop down. Then in the selection, we can select select all, remove the slicer header in values, segue UI is okay. We can change the font color to the same light blue we are having in the axis. And for the background, we can have the same color what we have here for the background. I went back to Figma and color sample this area. And this is the code for it. Then let's go to general effects, remove the background and we can resize it. looks like this. Also, we can change the order so the freshest date is on the top. 2022 is also not super fresh, but still closer to the present. And then we will add the card. In fact, we will copy this total volume. Place it in the middle. Let's change the field. We have this date range label here. Then go to format things call out value it's going to be segway ui light 10 pixel and let's change the color to this medium blue then go to general title it's going to be the title for the entire dashboard email volume and it's going to be 14 pixel also the text color this time is going to be this light blue move it down a little bit like that now we can do something with these kpis give them a little bit of structure we can put some dividers here so let's head back to figma here i'm going to create a line pressing l and holding down shift i can create a vertical line i'm going to make the width 104 pixel the color is going to be white and let's make it a gradient so we will put one stop in the middle and one stop on both sides and they are going to be 15 60 and 15 and also if you don't see any changes is because we also have to change the direction of it so you can just drag these dots or markers and drag them along the line like this we can also round the corners of it or the endings of it and then we have a line like this we can move it in the middle and the top in fact let's make this a bit less visible so let's make it 70 percent transparent then i'm going to create two copies of it pressing ctrl d then dragging it or i can just select it hold down the alt and drag it also creating a copy I select all three of them and add the note to layout. I'm going to put the alignment in the bottom center and then drag the auto layout all to the edges and also make these distances. These are the gaps between the lines, 104 pixel. And then I'm going to make the entire auto layout 140 pixel tall. The middle line is going to separate the total volume KPIs from the response rate KPIs and these two are going to divide the last year and the change KPIs. We can make these two smaller, select them both holding down shift and make the width 40 pixels. Then finally we can put the divider also here to divide the KPIs from the sent and received KPIs. Holding down shift, you can make it horizontal. I'm going to make it like 300 wide. Center align it and also make it a bit less visible. 40%, 50% transparency. 
And also going in the linear, I'm going to make the edges 0%. Looking like this. We can also drag it a bit more to the top. I align it to the end of these lines and then from this position I move down plus 16 pixels. Okay, we are done with it. Now we can export it one more time. But to have a better resolution, we can actually double the size. So I'm just going to copy it. And pressing down K, we have the option for scaling. And we can add two. Other than that, you can also select scale here. And then we are going to export this entire background again as a PNG. Here we can go to page formatting, canvas background, and replace the image. Image fit set to fit. And this is how it looks like. We can move this down a little bit. Yeah, something like this. Make this one a little bit smaller. Okay. And now we have come to the tricky part. We want to create these gradients here. And this is not possible directly with the Power BI visuals. We have this area chart here and we can add some shaded area, but in the options we cannot change it to a gradient. We can only change the transparency, but not the gradient itself. We could use another visual, a custom visual, or we could use Denab and build our own visual with it. But this time we are going to use Figma, creating an image on top of this layer, which is going to create, so to say, a reverse gradient from bottom to the top. And then we will add another line chart on top of the image so we can maintain the interactivity with the visual. So let's head back to Figma. I'm going to copy the entire background one more time. Before that, I deleted my enlarged background. And we are going to create a new frame, which is going to have the same size like this middle blue area. This is going to be our gradient. We can remove the fill. And why are we doing this is because if you would just use a simple gradient with a transparent in the top, it would cover this glowy pink area. So to have it also in our gradient, we will have it in this frame as well. So we are going to select this background and here on the selection pane, just drag it within this frame five. So all the other parts are hidden. And now coming to the frame, first go to the background here on the selection pane and remove this fill. We don't need the white fill and then open it, go to the frame one. And here we are going to go to the linear and actually just changing this top color to 0% opaque. Then go to this frame three here. This is this area and we can remove it completely. Also going back to the fill, the transparency starts here. And what we want is actually to start the transparency a bit lower, but it's not good if we drag it because later the colors won't be properly aligned with this background color. So instead of that, we are going to add another stop here and make this one also completely transparent. This way the transparency starts here and this is full colored here. I'm going to name the frame line chart gradient and one more thing what i want to do before export is deleting this spotlight here and now we are ready to export select export simply as a png and let's go back to power bi here we can go to insert and import it as an image line chart okay set the style scaling to fit and we can place it on top of our blue area and go to view, open the selection pane and place our line chart right below our image. And this is how it looks now. If we want to make the effect a bit stronger, we can just duplicate this image. And now the bottom part is not visible at all. 
Then we can select the line chart, copy it once, Ctrl C, Ctrl V. And to place them properly, we can select the bottom line chart again. Then with Ctrl select the top line chart again. Go to formatting, general, properties. And if you move the position up and down, then all the selected visuals are going to be aligned to the position, to the chart or to the visual which we selected as the first visual. So it's going to be the bottom line chart. Going here horizontally, move it up and down. Vertically, move it up and down. I'm just using the arrows on the keyboard. And now they are aligned properly. Now select only the bottom line chart. And here you can change it back to a simple line chart instead of an area chart. So we have here, we can select elements on it and also the line is properly visible, the axes are visible and we have this shaded gradient. Then we can do the same for the column charts. Let's go back to Figma. Here I'm just going to create a frame, going to the bottom, the entire size and I'm just going to add the fill to it, make it a gradient and color picking here from the background and here from the bottom and then go back to the top one and change it to 0% opacity. Also you can add another stop here and let's change it also to 0%. After that I'm just moving it on the side. This is going to be our column chart gradient and let's export it as PNG and let's get back to Power BI. Here again, insert and export it as an image. Again, style scaling to fit. And we drag it completely down and resize it a little bit, something like that. It can happen that we have some coloring issue here on the sides, that their colors are not matching properly. It can be a little bit tricky to play around with it. The issue is that if we make it full size, Power BI still puts a frame, a gap around the image. So it's always going to be a little bit of difference, but this time let's not be perfectionistic, leave it as it is. We can also move it a little bit upwards so it gives a bit more gradients to it. And this is fine for us. Then select the column chart, move it right below the image. And we do the same thing what we did before copy the column chart, select the below one first, then the top one, go to formatting, general, properties, and move the position up and down, horizontally, also vertically, then select only the top chart. And in this case, we want to make the columns transparent. So let's go to visual columns and change the color transparency to 100% for received and also for sent. Okay, there is, it's almost done. There is one more thing I would want to add is to be able to switch the view between different selections. So this is a yearly view. We could add the monthly and the weekly view as well. In the monthly view, we can put on the days of the month on the x-axis and in the weekly view, the days of the week. For that, I'm going to group all the line chart elements with the images. This is going to be line chart. Then let's group these elements here. It's going to be the column chart. And I also drag the slicer to them. And if we select them all and group them together, this is going to be our year review. I'm going to call it year. And one thing before we do that, what's important is here, if we select one element, it's going to filter the gradient behind it. And also these are not visible if a month is not selected, but that's okay for now. That's not our focus, but the design is our focus. So to make sure that the gradient stays the same, we have to disable the interactivity between these two visuals. I'm going to turn this one off and also the images so we can access it, select this element again, go to formatting, edit interactions, 
and we can disable the interaction between them. And now when we select something, this stays the same. Okay, let's get back to our different views. I'm going to copy this entire year selection or year group and I'm going to call this month, hide the year group and then go in the month to the slicer. We can replace it with month year short. So we can select the different months. We can also change the sorting to descending. Then let's go to our visuals and everywhere we will replace the x-axis. Instead of month short, we will put month day number. Let's make sure it's on an x-axis. We can remove the grid lines. It added it automatically. It should look like this. I go to the bottom line chart and again replacing the x-axis and also the grid lines. And then we have to do the same thing like before and disable the interactivity between the top and bottom line charts. I'm going to select the top one. I mean, disabling the images and the top chart first, then select the top chart and disable the interactivity. Enable them again or show them again. And then I'm going to do the same for the column chart. I replace the x-axis and also remove the grid lines. And in this case, if we select something, it highlights like this. So here we don't have to change the interactivity. And again, if you see these error messages, it's because you select a month value here or a date value here. And here you have a different date selection. So you have to make sure that you select a specific month, December, and now it's fixed. But seemingly we don't have on the selected day any emails in December. So yeah, so we have some issues, but we are just going to ignore them for this video. We could alternatively put some default values in the measures, what happens when they are blank or like invalid. Okay, now we are going to do our weekly view. Let's copy the month group, disable the previous month and let's call it week. And here again, we will have to disable the interactivity between the line charts and replace the x-axis instead of month day number is going to be weekday short and let's do it also for the column chart i'm going to do it off screen when we are done with it we can create some bookmarks let's go to view on the top enable the bookmark pane and we are going to add three bookmarks let's call them week, month, and year. And they are all going to be applied only for the selected visuals. We can leave the data and the display on. Current page is also okay. And just click on selected visuals in all of them. Then we can select all the three groups. Now week is visible, month and year are hidden. And then this is going to be our week bookmark right click on week again and click update then hide the week group show the month group select all the elements again select the month update it then hide the month group show the year group select them again and now update the year bookmark now if you click them through just to check them Sometimes there are some issues. For example, for week, nothing is visible. So just enable the week again, select all of them and update the week. Okay, now it works properly. The reason for keeping the data in is because we want to reset these slicers to all again. So make sure that when, before you do the bookmarks, all of these slicers have zero selections. Then we can add some buttons for the bookmarks. Go to insert buttons. We're going to pick a bookmark navigator, resize it and place it on this side. In fact, I'm gonna give it a 40 pixel height. 
Then go to visual, shape, give it 10 pixel rounded corners. Then go to style, the default style. We can leave it on Segway UI 10 pixels, but give it this light blue color. Remove the borders and make the fill 100% transparent. And we can skip the hover state again, go on press. We can make the font a bit larger. Let's make it white. And also the fill is going to be white, 85% transparent. Then go to selected, again, make it a bit larger, white color for the font. And the fill color is going to be white with 70% transparency. So now when we select something, it's going to look like this. And all we have to do now is to test it on the mobile. So I'm going to save it and upload it into web services, powerbi.com. I uploaded it here in the Power BI service. So I'm just going to open it. And this is how it looks like here. But what we really want to see is how it looks like on mobile. So I'm going to go on my phone. So I'm going to go on my phone and just open the dashboard in the Power BI app. Workspaces and look for phone app emails. You can enlarge it. And yeah, this looks nice, but I really don't like these white edges around it. And we can change it if we change the wallpaper of the dashboard. So let's get back to Power BI service. Here, I just click on edit. I'm going to change the background and add a wallpaper to it. Let's say adding a blue color, but maybe a bit less saturated and a bit darker, something like this. Then I just click save. And back to my phone, if I refresh the visual, let's see how it looks like. Make it full size again. Yeah, it looks pretty decent to me. Selecting different views, being able to select in the slicer different periods. And also, we could even add more visuals because it's very easy to scroll down in mobile. And yeah, we could add some distribution by categories, by subjects or by countries. I put another side, I put another page in the Power BI report. So you can check how it would look like there. So this is it. I hope you liked it. If you want to see similar videos in the future, you can click on subscribe. You can also leave a comment or feedback if you want. And see you next time.